Did you smell that in there? That's arrogance coming back to the world of hobby Q&A. You're on the table with the main man, Holy Diver. And today we're going to be multi-basing a unit of orc cavalry. Um, basically what I, what I do is I retreat multi-base. Um, there's a little oval that my models come on that they're uh, attached to. They're basically uh, sculpted that way to be on this thing, so that usually glues on the cavalry base. Well, we're not going to be taking them off of that. The reason for this is because I want my orcs to be affixed with a larger service rather than the hooves. There's all kinds of way to multi-base. This is a way that I found that works for me best. So uh, we're going to be doing retreat method, and I'll show you how that works. It's very simple, very quick. Um, you usually stick on a few models, and then you decorate around those few models, and then you move on to the next section of the tray and you retreat as you go. So, I'll show you how that works, I'll show you the colors I use, and we'll be back. So, welcome to my guide on how to paint uh, the multi-base and everything. So, basically, as you see, I've gone through and I've used sterling mud on the base. This is that Mantic uh, cavalry tray right here. And um, I've just sort of made sure it got around everywhere. I'm going to have to actually Right here, we're going to actually have to take our, um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. This is where our uh, static grass is going to go to cover up any cracks and to blend them in. But uh, we're to the point now where we have to dry brush everything in between with a little bit of wasteland effect in order to uh, do what I call retreat basing. So we're going to dry brush all the, the uh, secondary colors on which are going to be Codex Gray and Vomit Brown. After we dry brush all that on, we're going to put our static grass on and then we're going to add our front two characters. You always want to sort of leave yourself a doorway to get in. So as you can see, oh god, what am I doing? As you see, we got the uh, gray on there and everything. We're just using a flat dry brush. We're going to go ahead and get our wasteland on. Let's see here. Bam. If we have too much of this stuff, we can always just wipe it off on our trusty rag and then begin again. A lot of people do this before, but I like to blend my guys in. This is just how I found a way to do it. I don't know. This isn't the right way to do it. I'm sure there are ten better ways to do this. Like, cut them. But I, I do like them being on their original plastic bases that they uh, come on. Uh, the, tw the 25 millimeter ones that they usually come with for cavalry and everything. I do like that, but I really wanted the multi-base unit of orcs, and the name of this unit is the Art Tusks. And I've been enjoying a lot of Hammer Studios Dracula today. Had the day off for once, I decided to take it easy. I never do that. I usually always like to work. But I figured, let's just get my projects done. This will just get me back to Romans a little bit faster, and I like doing Romans. Plus, I only have two units left for my Roman army. Got a bunch of characters I gotta paint. Gotta paint both Russell Crows. That'll be fun. And everything. This is just the way I've been doing it. I've been posting pictures of cavalry units for Romans forever now. I'm up to three, plus the Numidians. The black guys, yeah, I've been painting black guys, that's right. There we go. Nice and wastelandy. Alright, then we get to the fun part. Seeing as everything that we're doing is dry brush, we get to the fun part now. And that's the glue phase. We gotta find our little glue pot here. Be right back. So for our static grass, we'll be using this. It's just a real quick guide. I don't know. I don't even know how good this video is gonna turn out, or if it will even help anybody multi-base their shit. 
But this is the easy part. This is actually a fun part, act. Maneuvering in here with the glue. So you're going to put the glue basically on the edge of the, where the oval base is that they come on. They, they come welded to an oval base. So wherever you don't want the, to see the ridge, that's where you put the glue. We're going to put just a little bit of glue out over here. And usually, this is why I usually only limit myself to about six a base, but I just couldn't resist doing seven. I wanted to do eight, but these pigs are really, really, really big. They're big pigs. And you just keep going around. maneuver if you will to each one now you're not gonna see much there but we're gonna go around this edge on him we'll actually have to turn it around if we wanna get to where we're going there we go Right there, let's do that again. And you just basically paint your glue on. I'm sure you could do the same thing with like tufts, tufts of uh what do you call it? They have static tufts now that you can just apply that are just grass. That might be fun too. I'm just going to keep it nice and easy. I like nice and easy. I'm lazy. I think that's what I've been building at. I've just been building to the fact that I'm a lazy piece of shit. And I don't care anymore. I literally don't care. Sometimes... But this is still how I relax. This is my go-to. I mean, I was playing video games the other day and I was like, eh, fuck it. You know, there's nothing fun going on in there. I already know what Mario's going to do. All right. And the only drawback to this is that we're going to have to wait for it to dry in order to do any kind of work to it. That looks good. It'll look a whole lot better with the grass on it. It'll go up a little bit. It'll go up and shade a little bit and be a little bit brighter. I'm gonna keep that in the water. We'll get our grass. Yay! This is the hard part. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Move that way out of the way. And then one thing that you can use is a dryer sheet um, to clean up your desk area once it once this stuff gets on all right and then you just sort of shake it down yay this is fun isn't it you usually that's why I installed the uh, the handles so now that we've got enough on we might actually be able to no, let's use this. Come here. There we go. And then you use the air gun. Since these guys are solid on there, we're just going to pick them up here. There we go. Make sure we get every part that we had glued on.
And when you put these guys on and you do this, you want to make sure your miniatures are absolutely dry of wash too. Otherwise, that'll make for some interesting, re some interesting time spent trying to fix that crap. There we go. Just want to make sure you get your static on. Come up. There we go. There we go. And um, that's basically how it's done. We're going to come back for the final steps and I'll show you what I do when uh, this all dries. But we'll be back. So as you can see, we've added one more orc. We have to make sure that the super glue that we put the orc down, the orc champion down with, is absolutely 100% dry. That way you can paint the uh, little, see they come on this little thing here. You can paint that brown and then put the uh, sterling mud on. And that's how you, re and, the, and again, you, you kind of work your way over and up and out. So we're going to grab a very crappy brush I don't care about. And we're just going to touch around there. Yeah, it's dry. So, let's get some brown out really quickly and we're just going to paint around there and make that brown. Oh, that's the easy part, isn't it? But then we have to, after we make it brown, we have to we have to use all the texture out to there. So, we won't be finishing this tonight, but I'm going to be leaving you with an idea of what comes next. So that I can turn off the camera for once here. Let's see. Let's get the... I always use the crappy brush for this. It's effective. Just pick up as much as we need. Because we still have to highlight it to the same color. Now luckily these bases for the multi-base effect come textured, but I like to blend them with the, the Citadel Sterling Mud texture first. Going in. We need more than that. Come on, give us some. Bam. Still have yet to try a butter knife for getting that stuff out. I can never ever seem to get enough of it. But you can see the way I'm working it. I'm getting this. I'm getting my sticky goop on there. have to dry brush your your codex gray on and your uh, yellow I mean your vomit brown on to uh, make this complete and you don't want a texture where you're gonna glue of course but other than that we'll be able to come back to the finished product as soon as that texture dries and we'll be able to stick our last man on because I need to be able to get in there that's like my last doorway so basically you rinse and repeat, you dry brush again the area of where you put the pig, and then you put glue on. And then you uh, do the last guy. Just like that. Well, kind of like that. I don't know how I'm going to place them. I want them probably back a little bit further like that. But let's grab a little bit of glue and get this easy part done here because this. Actually, this is just as fun as washing. When the glue works here, we just need a little bit. There we go. Bam. Get that there. Get our brush wet. And let's make some magic happen. A 
I really hope this video helps a lot of you. I know there are better ways to do it, but it would have been a flimsy attachment, in my opinion, from a design perspective, like when I, um, to snip them off of that little, I think it would have been, okay, so this little oval that they come on, I think from a design perspective, if I were to snip them off here and then glue them on, I could either use a pin into some cork or something, but I think it would be a way too flimsy of an attachment, and I would be gluing them there all the time when they snap off. Or their legs might break. And I don't want to I don't want to compromise the integrity of a very hard part of the model to fix. So let's get our uh, trusty old static grass here. grab our handle and it's always good to put a big old rock on there that you just wad on with super glue so that you have a little bit of control over now let's get this off All right. Take our super glue here and we can get set up for the last guy. And I'm just going to grab a drop zip kicker. Just a drop. So that, that it so that the adhesive sticks very quickly and I don't have to wait too long for the super glue to absolutely dry. And sometimes you might have a little bit of glue left on the bottom of these from where they were glued onto the Pepsi caps. But I think this is going to work out just fine. Bam. So I gotta wait for that super glue to dry so that my, because if your brush, you, you know what happens if your brush drags into some super glue, your brush is basically ruined. Um, I've actually ruined a Windsor with super glue up by accident, but it, you know, it'd been some time, you know, I went to the bathroom, made a sandwich, came back down, my glue was still dry. So once this dries, we're just going to rinse and repeat again with our, um, uh, our Sterling mud. And once the Sterling mud dries, we're going to go to our Codex Gray, and then once that dries, we're going to go to our Vomit Brown, and then we're going to go back to static grassing. So here we are with the finished product. As you can see, these are the Ard Tusks. Um, they're really well multi-based in my opinion. I think that they blend really well together and it just it's got a it's got a little bit of a look to it, a little bit of a dangerous feeling, you know. And of course what I was talking about here on the back is that this right here. This is why I have to buy another Monuments uh, Chaos Ruins package because I think that having a handle on each one of the units definite it is a definite must when uh, having multi-base things, especially when they're big and as awkward as orcs. When I'm like go to pick the unit up, I have to grab it to the side. But if I want to pivot it really quick, I can hurry up and I can grab it by that little handle that I put down there. But this is just the uh, way I decided to do it. I got. I did very little decorations, just some tree trunks right there, some um, nothing special, um, just some static grass and some stir and some highlighted sterling mud, um, because these guys take up a lot of room. Um, we're going to get a side by side comparison next to a unit that's not multi based, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So this is definitely just as imposing as the unit to the left, the Ard tusks, but. Um, you know, with this I can make a hoard. It's perfect. Um, it doesn't look right. I definitely think I want to make one more of these because I had a lot of fun in doing the the yard tusks. Um, maybe run a hoard of yard tusks or something. I don't know. But uh, even though orc hordes don't exist, you you have some tools and some of the books to make your own units. But uh, as far as like this goes, I like this. But these guys are very hard to rank up. When I was putting my first 20 together, I had to, uh, before I base some of them, I had to uh, refiddle them around to um, 
make them fit every single time. And I had a friend that I sold 10 of these to, um, and he all he ever did was complain about um, how they didn't rank up. And every time I had to show him, um, he, he was autistic, but he was also an asshole. But every time I had to just turn it over, I'm like, look, they're numbered. All you have to do is put in one through five, and then any of the ones that aren't one through five will just go on the back in any position. And he was a real asshole about it, but you know, and it, I, I mean, rightfully so. Um, but as you can see, you know, um, I did take a little liberty and I just put those guys on a four stick real fast to make uh, deployment a little bit easier because, you know, I, w I could play fantasy with these, but I'm not going to play Age of Sigmar anytime soon because I'm not a hypocrite. I mean, you know, I bash that game enough. If I started playing it, I'd be just as big as a hypocrite. And besides, round bases? No, fuck that noise. I'm not going to push around 40, 50 models like everybody else in 40k or something. I I like the units and I like the fact that, you know, and these guys are just lightly super glued in. So there's a lot of ways to like base your miniatures and everything, but I really like the look of this. I'm about to spray clear coat all over it and I'm going to be really happy with how he turned out and everything. And I did this in one week. All of this in in a matter of six days. So that was, uh, let's see, one, two, three orcs uh, Monday through Wednesday this guy was done Thursday and then um, these two were done uh, Friday and then he was finished up Friday night and I just barely now finished the basing for this and it didn't take me too long because doing this is like ingrained in my blood you know I've done it so many times the reason why these pigs are brown is because these were a used purchase on eBay and uh, basically what happened here with these guys is uh, the pigs were already brown. So rather than uh, re-dry brush them again, I just did one shade of uh, the bestial. And I lightly highlighted it with uh, tanned earth and washed it with uh, army wash. I can't remember if it was strong. It might have been just strong tone. And then I just kept their, uh, I kept their faces a different color. This was actually the... Uh, the color on a lot of the pigs before I switched to flesh. Um, let's see. The ones that weren't savages that I had, the 20 that I had, actually had this color of face. It was just uh, it's probably the most useful color on the face of the planet. Denny Stone. And I'm lucky I still have half a pot of this stuff because it comes in handy. And, and you can count on Games Workshop to discontinue anything that's useful anything that is useful they will discontinue um, if I were to compare it to this they are not the same color they are not the same color they see that this one is unique they are not the same these two are not the same color I wish they'd bring back this foundation paint plus the mercury red was really good um, but you know there's tons of different ways to do cavalry and everything and you know, this, I do like the aesthetic of this. It looks like wild hellion pigs running through the forest, uh, about to charge into some something big and and uh, ring someone's bell, which is, which is what we're going for here. So let's just reiterate on things that Games Workshop has discontinued over the years that were useful. Bretonians, modular plastic, tombstones, chestnut ink, my beloved chestnut ink, and Deneb Stone and this color right here. These are th these are things that I miss and I wish they just bring back. I don't I don't care, you know. I mean, I really like these, but this color, please bring that back. But yeah, just as far as like cavalry goes though. I think it's a good unit. Can't wait to use it. And hopefully they melt faces. Well, I'm back again. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, tutorial on how to multi-base cavalry models. Or This really works for infantry as well. Um, there are certain aesthetics I like to basing and not multi-basing. Like on my Roman infantry, I multi-based all of the uh, auxiliary units. Um, the auxiliary guys who are kind of skirmishy and everything, and they're actually kind of bigger than the standard legionary because auxiliary usually come from outside of Rome. But the uh, standard legionary, they're all on 20 millimeter squares because I like that imposing look of having guys in a formation 
being very straight, proper, going towards you. It's very intimidating. I like that factor um, as the legionaries as individuals rather than on a multi-base thing. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't do it that way, but um, you know, that's the aesthetic thing that I've chosen for my Romans. As for like the cavalry, they're all multi-based. And um, that's how I did that there. But as for like the orcs and everything, I think I want to do one more unit because I had a lot of fun doing this side project. Now I can go back to painting Celts and I'm down to two units for my Romans. So as far as keeping New Year's resolution goes, I think my Romans and my Celts are going to get done. And there's two resolutions, you know. Keep, when you make a New Year's resolution, make something that's obtainable. Anyway, as you know, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video, comment, or subscribe. But until then, keep fighting and stay metal, my friends. Hey, Internet. If you like these videos, there's a few simple things you can do for me to support this channel. You can always hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and share this video. That's as good as a $5 donation. Thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.